So welcome everybody. This I am your host for the evening, Chad Winstead, and I have a wonderful, awesome individual by the name of Ray here that's going to uh, to talk to you about sky enhancements. Now Ray has been coming onto the photography scene pretty hot lately. He's uh he's producing some really incredible work, and um, I actually know Ray on a personal level. I've known him for a little while now, and uh, we've done some work together and whatnot. We're uh, in the same area. And uh, he's helped us out with some weddings before and helped him out. And um, I'm super excited to have him on here because he is uh, a master of creating some really, really cool uh, dramatic images with uh, like super wide angle scenes and dramatic skies and all that fun stuff. So uh, I'm excited to hear what he has to say on how he shoots for skies, how he edits for skies and things like that. So, uh, so yeah, welcome, Ray. Go ahead and unmute yourself and talk to the world. Hey, what's going on, Chad? What's going on, everybody? Not excited much, to be not here. Much. Hey, we're excited to have you, man. Um, so we're going to, we're going to dive into things here in just a moment, but I want to give, uh, give the viewers kind of a chance to get to know you a little bit better. So, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you're up to these days during quarantine, all that fun stuff. Hey, uh, so I'm over in uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina, um, right over here in uh, Chad's uh, neck of the woods over here. Um, Let's see, uh, um, I'm an active duty uh, military, so that's why I'm over here. I'm actually from California. I've uh, been in the Marine Corps for about, I think, 17 and a half years now. Um, so it's been a while. And I uh, uh, started out shooting a lot of landscapes. Um, I was really into shooting like Milky Ways and all that. Um, I think that's kind of what inspired my, my love for like wide angle uh, scenes and portraits. Um, it's basically just a landscape shot with, you know, a bride and groom or, uh, uh, you know, a person in it. Um, uh, did that for about a year or two years. Um, then started getting into the, uh, into weddings, um, portrait, lighting, all that fun stuff. Um, did a couple of weddings with Chad here. Kind of, he's, he's the guy that introduced me to Magmod and all that stuff. And <laughs> represent. Kind of showed me all the cool lighting tricks but um but yeah it's uh it's been a fun uh couple years uh you know doing uh getting into the business of everything and um can't wait to show you guys or uh, uh share some of my knowledge with you guys yeah man you've been uh, you've been killing it lately i love um definitely love what you've done with the milky ways i know that's the uh the first time i ever saw your work was the the self-portrait that you did of you in front of the milky way and I want to pull that up for the viewers here in just a few minutes. But, um, but yeah, you've been killing it lately. So uh, tell us, or uh, tell them where we can find you on uh, social media, your website, all that fun stuff. Um, you can find me at uh, RayBenaskriPhotography.com or RayBenaskri.com, but um, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Um, I even started at a TikTok now. I don't really do anything with it, but you can find me on there too. Um, yeah, those are pretty much the main places, but I'm mostly active on uh, on Instagram. Right on, right on. Yeah, I was going to share your um, share your website here with everybody. We'll share the screen for just a second. Um, beautiful, beautiful oh, stuff. Um, click on some of your wedding photography here, just so that people can see what they're getting ready to to uh, to learn about with these uh, with these skies and everything. So awesome, awesome stuff. I'm super excited. All right. So you ready to dive into it? Yes, sir. Awesome. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to have Ray uh, share his screen here in just a moment. We're going to walk through some actual photos. And, um, but first off, one of the, uh, one of the first tips we wanted to kind of chat about was how do you uh, shoot for a dramatic sky? Um, so I guess let's start off with, uh, with what equipment you like to use as far as your, let's start off with your camera and your uh, lens choice. Um, and then move into lighting and uh, modifiers. Um, so for camera, I use a uh, Sony A9. Um, and then uh, lens choice, uh, either 16 to 35 uh, G Master. Um, but I recently just picked up a 12 to 24 and uh, I've been having a lot of fun with that. Um, I just nice. wanted to get it wider. So pretty much as wide as I can get um, to get, you know, as much of the scene and sky as possible, but still not being too far away from, you know, my, um, my, my subjects. Um, right. Lighting is definitely a must. Um, I mean, you know, you can't, you can either expose for one or the other. So if you're trying to 
explorers for that sky got to have a light for uh, your subjects. Um, and as far as lighting goes, it's uh, 8,200, um, 8,600 sometimes if I'm using the mag box. Um, <clears throat> but lately I've just been using the uh, mag sphere and, and you know, mag sphere grid combo. Um, and, you know, just putting a little bit of light on my subject so that way I can expose for the sky. So when I shoot for the, when I shoot for it all, I just, I just underexpose a little bit um, to get all of that sky detail in there. Yeah, man, the, uh, the Sony A9 is an, uh, an amazing camera and that's one of our, uh, that's one of our favorites. Um, we, we pretty much use the same, uh, the same combo. We'll, we'll shoot with the A9 and the 16 to 35 for uh, the majority of our kind of, you know, landscape style portraits. Uh, but the 8200 is such a versatile light and how you can use it because of how powerful it is, but you can also just use it with MagMod or you can throw it in the mag box and, and get beautiful results. So um, definitely a versatile, uh, a versatile setup, but um, we had some, some comments here. Tanya Parada says, Hey, Ray. Uh, Elizabeth Lloyd says, Hey, Anthony so, says, saludos. So, Awesome. Hey, if y'all have any questions out there for Ray or for us, just drop them in the comments. We'll, uh, we'll answer them as we see them. Okay. So Ray, I'm going to get you to go ahead and share your screen and, um, we'll get started with, uh, with some tips here and how you edit. I want you to walk us through kind of, uh, some different photos and, uh, what you would do to, uh, to tweak the sky. So whenever you're ready, go ahead. All right. Let me, uh, share the screen here. All right, can you see it? I can, yep. All right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I guess I can get started with this photo here. This is um, kind of a styled shoot I did last week. Um, I don't know if you've, uh, have you been to this venue yet, Chad? Yeah. I have, I have not, where is that? Um, it's over here in Jacksonville. They just opened up uh, the Rustic Barn. Um, okay. Really like awesome venue. Um, they, uh, I've been doing a lot of work with them um, lately. And uh, I wanted to do this uh, just quick styled shoot um, to get ready for, they got like this wedding expo coming up in a few weeks. And I uh, just wanted to have this ready to display over there. But um, nice. we were blessed already with an awesome sky that night. So it didn't, you know, uh, really have to, I don't, I don't have to sky swap this at all or anything like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we already had an awesome sky. So um, just like I was mentioning earlier, um, when, I, when I was shooting for this, I used a 12, 12 to 24. Um, so I was zoomed all the way out at 12. Um, and then uh, that allowed me to get as much of the sky as possible, but, you know, still staying close to, uh, to the bride there. And then, and also kind of that distortion kind of, you know, gives it, gives that veil and that dress that, you know, longer type of uh, effect. But other than that, um, the, uh, the way I shoot for is I would underexpose, of course. So I think I shot this at, let's see, one, 125th it was it was already getting pretty dark the sun was already down i had an iso 50 um f5.6 and the way i you want me to go into like how i would edit this already yeah yeah why don't you edit it kind of uh from start to finish real quick so which preset you would select and then uh what brushes you would use to to make the sky pop even more if, if you need any all right so um uh, so for this also i just want to mention the lighting setup uh, I had two lights in this one. I had one on her and then I had one on him back here. So I've already went ahead and just cloned them out so they weren't like distracting everybody, but uh, reset, every, everything set back to straight out of camera. Um, I didn't want to have to deal with, you know, it was a big mag box um, in the left over here, but I already took it out. Um, but anyways, yeah, what, what I would, how I would start doing this is, um, let's see. Definitely start over here with, uh, usually I, I'm either using the Crush or the Modern. Mm -hmm. uh, I typically start with modern a lot. Um, the crush is probably one of my favorites though. Um, I mean, just, so usually I'll see what that can do first. And let me see, I mean, that kind of already did a lot to the sky there and it made it really blue too. And it's right. pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool. Look, uh, let me see here. Why? trying to figure out why it's not letting me move out of this brush here. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> All right, so the way I would edit this is the sky's already popping out. Um, I do wanna bring some shadow details back out like in the rest of the scene. So I'll just bring the shadows up a little bit, maybe like right there. 
Uh, but normally, like once I hit the crush preset, um, I'm, I'm going to adjust the exposure just a, a little bit just to get the skins and everything else where I want it. But I don't really think I have to do too much here because I, I did want to, I did want this shot to be like super dramatic. So um, I'm going to leave it a little dark. Um, right. I think it's important to mention, you know, your, your overall exposure there when you started, uh, you know, it looked very underexposed at first, but as soon as you click that, that crush preset of how much it brings out. So Pius talked about, you know, kind of exposing that way for these presets. They're going to, they're going to pop in some additional exposure in there. Um, so, you know, preserving the the highlights and those details and giving just enough that in the, uh, in the shadows to where it's not making anything noisy. And I think you did a, a, a great job here between balancing that, you know, kind of darkened exposure and the flash. Right. So it made it made her really really stand out against that background. As soon as you just did the one click, right? And and if yeah, and if you guys are you know just getting into like the uh, visual flow presets, definitely watch the primer videos because that's kind of what helped me um, you know guide like how I wanted to start shooting. I, I kind of shoot that way anyways, but now I paid more attention to the histogram, um, you know, and making sure it's a little bit more to the left there, right where I need it, so that way it works like almost one click with these uh, presets. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, just, you know, if, if you wanted to go for like just a, a regular modern look, you don't want, you know, if you don't want it to be like too punchy or too blue in the sky, modern works just as well too. Um, so I just switched to modern real quick. Um, but I kind of like the crush version. Um, yeah. let's see what else would I do? Here? It kind of matches the blue hour that you almost shot this at, so, you know, slightly after sunset. Um, mm -hmm. but you can always come down and, and, and tweak the blues, you know? Yeah, and that's yeah, that's that's what I was gonna do here. I I like how blue it is. I'm I'm just gonna bring it down just a little bit, so maybe like right there um, would be great. Um, and then if I wanted to bring any more, you know, uh, uh, sky details out, you got the um, sky brush, of course, in the um, in the retouching toolkit, and mm -hmm. that one I use a lot too. Um, so I'll just brush over areas of the sky just to make it pop out a little bit more or a little bit more dramatic. So, yeah, the um, the some of my two favorite brushes are the uh, are that sky and clouds and the uh, the nature and color pop. I love those two uh, those two brushes for for just I'm, making I, certain elements pop. I think I'm right there with you, Chad. Um, I, I um, yeah, it's either between the two or I'll use yeah. that um, just like radial um, and use nature color. I think I, I I think I pretty much learned that from you. Um, and watching you uh, do your your live edits too. Right. So yeah, one of my favorite tricks before Crush came out um, was I've always, you know, loved dramatic skies and uh, dramatic detail in the backgrounds. And um, so I would use the modern pack, but I would go in with that radial filter or just the brush and use that sky and clouds and the nature and color pop on top of each other. And it would make, it would make for a, a basically a crushed sky uh, to an extent. So it was a, um, it was a, it was a pretty fun little, uh, little trick, but now crush basically eliminates the need for having to do those two brushes. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool, uh, pack. Yep. Yeah. I love it. All right. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much, I think that that's pretty much what I would do for this image. I mean, I can go back in there later and, you know, remove that car and do all the other stuff in Photoshop, but right. we're not going to do that right now. Right. So next image is uh, this one. So this one was a uh, engagement session. Um, we weren't even playing, this was, uh, we shot this on, on base somewhere and, and there was, we have a parking garage on base and we were gonna move somewhere else. Um, I can't remember where we were gonna go, but we weren't planning on going up here until we saw like what the sky looked like. So I just told him to follow me and we went up to the top of this, um, this uh, parking structure and uh, you know, I just told him to get out of the car, get, you know, just posing right there real fast. And, and, and I, you know, took my, um, I had my 8200 on the mags for still on the light stand in my trunk, you know, and just pulled that. <laughs> <laughs> and I got this shot real quick. Um, and, you know, just had him like right there in the, in the middle of between that, the oranges on that, um, and the clouds there. Yeah. Um, I think but yeah, it's important. It's important to note the, uh, the compositional, um, things in this image where you have, you have so many leading lines in this photo. It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, all, I'm always all about the yeah the, the leading lines and everything, um, yeah. but uh, but yeah, it, it was it was it was just perfect, you know. Um, just had him jump out and 
um, a little bit of lighting um, and you know, like underexposing, of course, then and got this. And then how I would edit this, um, same thing. I would either go with Modern or Crush. So I think I'm always looking at the preview here, kind of just so I can see how it looks first. And then, um, so yeah, we'll just go with Crush. So already right out the gate. Wow. Um, yeah. I would just bring it up, maybe just a, just a hair on the exposure. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty good. And then I can brush it again with the uh, sky brush or, or, or even just use a gradient. Sometimes I like to do that too. So I'm not, you know, just to make it quicker, but. Right. And it depends on how much of that goes over my people. If, if it's gonna like go over them and start affecting their skin and everything, then I'll just use a brush. Right. Yeah, I love the the clouds, you know, like I said, the leading, the, all the different leading lines in this image. This is where a center composed image works really, really well, where you have those clouds coming straight down to the center. And then you have the, the sides of the parking garage. And then you also have mm -hmm. what looks like a burnout mark. I don't know who was doing burnouts with one wheel, but um, would you leave that in the photo or would you take that out? I'm just curious. I actually, uh, I think, it, yeah, I actually took that one out of the, uh, of the original photo. Um, right. I mean, I like it, but it's just, you know, it was, it was a little distracting too. Right. Now, well, it's an impressive, it's an impressive burnout for sure. I don't, I mean, they had one wheel spinning or either that's a really, really wide motorcycle tire. I can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just messing around right now with the uh, nature color. Um, just kind of yep. see what it looks like. So it's kind of cool. Um, maybe dial it back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the that's the one thing about those Sony files. Once you start going a little too crazy with all the color. You have to be careful of those uh those artifacts in the sky and things like that but this this looks amazing now do you shoot uh this is a this is a question for you do you shoot compressed or uncompressed raw in your a9 i'm just curious uh i i shoot un uncompressed um, okay yeah I, uh um i mean sometimes I sh i'll shoot compressed i started out shooting compressed a lot but um i feel like for like these types of images especially then i'll shoot um, uncompressed is to try to get as much out of it as possible um, right but when i'm you know between these types of shots you know i i still do you know like the uh like close-ups and and at weddings too you know like the details and everything else that's going on throughout a wedding you know i'm gonna probably shoot compressed just to have more uh, more space but when i know i'm gonna take a shot like this um then i would shoot shoot uncompressed awesome awesome so uh, Mary asked if these work in a uh, Adobe Camera Raw. Do you mess around in Adobe Camera Raw at all in Photoshop? Um, I don't. <laughs> okay. I just want to ask you so, the same, uh, same question earlier this week too. And, um, yeah. So the preset should work in, uh, in Camera Raw as far as the brushes go. I'm not, I don't ever use Camera Raw, so I'm not too familiar if, um, how the brushes are in there. So we'll have to, uh, to get pie on that question for you. But um, I'm talking about like within Photoshop, yeah, within Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw is is um, okay, is what you would use. Yeah, um, I've, I've used it a little bit uh, before. Like if I'm already in Photoshop, I'm doing something else, and I just wanted to make a quick adjustment. Um, I'll, I'll use it. It's a, um, I feel like it's not as intuitive because um, I'm right. not really, I don't use uh, Raw a lot either. Um, but it's yeah. still kind of works the same way. Uh, um, I like I'll, I'll use the. Uh, a quick dodge and lift brush sometimes in Photoshop um, if I need to. Okay, perfect. So um, Elizabeth says beautiful, but I, uh, I definitely agree. And uh, would you do anything else to this image? I know you mentioned removing the watermark. Do you like the, uh, would you leave the lights and things like that in there? I think this is awesome that this is a parking garage. <laughs> you, would, you wouldn't yeah, guess that at first look. Uh, yeah, no, no, I, I wouldn't leave the, uh, the, I mean, you could, but um, you know, when I do these like, uh, big style edits, you know, and, and I'm looking at, you know, I'm, I'm looking at from like an artistic perspective, I try to get rid of all the distractions and right. I just want the focus to be them and the sky, but I'll take out the uh, light stance. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to show you guys something. Cool. So yeah, while he's, while he's running to grab something, do you guys have any questions on the edits so far or anything you would like to see? Um, if you're interested in what do you do when you don't have a dramatic sunset like this, you definitely need to stick around because Ray's going to demonstrate um, sky swapping. So he's going, to, uh, he's going to show us how to pull photos into the popular Luminar 4 and actually do a sky swap. So what you got? So, this you can, is a, so I have this as my metal print sample that I show my clients. So I use mm -hmm. that image for that. Nice. Place, but yeah, yeah. The, the light stands. 
and they're in that burnout mark. So. Here, I'm going to, I'm going to stop your share. That way people can see it a little bit better. There you go. <laughs> Oh, you guys see it? Oh, yeah, that's that's awesome. I can uh, yeah, see us in the reflection, reflection but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, double exposure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Alan Williams asks. It says it looks great. Do you ever transform the image to straighten or upright things? Do you use that transform tool? Yes. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. Oh, where did my Am I still screen sharing? No, you, you need to share it again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where'd I go? Let's see here. Raj says, great shots. Tanya says, gorgeous print. Thanks, guys. Def definitely great. I love metal with, uh, with sunset portraits. It just looks so good on metal. All right. There you go. I'm just trying to figure out how to navigate my <laughs> There we go. All right. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely would uh, use a, I use a transform tool all the time. I think I already kind of like pre-adjusted some of these images um, with the crop just because I didn't feel like doing it um, on here. But yeah, I feel like I'm like, I'm, I'm having to straighten out all the time. No matter, yeah, and this, the Sony comes with like a leveler inside and I use it. But I don't know, like, I feel like, like maybe <laughs> I have one leg that's bigger than the other or something. I don't know. For some reason, all my shots are like slightly a little crooked. So but yeah, I'm always using that. Um, and the transform tools, um, if, if I'm wanting to fix a little bit of distortion, um, I'll, I'll use the, uh, like the, uh, the guided tool or the vertical, um, tools if I want to like make buildings stand up straighter or, or whatever. Yeah. That's typically when I use it is, uh, when I'm, when I have some type of architecture in the image and I'm using a wide angle, that's, that's when I'll use it. But for shots like this, you can, i I like to keep that perspective of kind of shooting just from a slightly lower angle. So you see a little bit more of the sky and all that doesn't look, uh, doesn't look funky. Yeah. Um, so who do you, uh, who do you use for your metal printing? Somebody was asking in the comments. Um, I use H and H color lab. Um, the reason why I like using H and H is, I mean, they do like amazing stuff. Um, but I started using them cause they're the only ones I know that put your branding on the back of the, uh, the boat mount here. So I kind of like that, you know, nice. um, I don't know. Very nice. Yeah, I use um, I actually use my lo local. I use ASAP Photo and Camera for for ours. They do uh, they do metal prints here in Greenville, and uh, they do a really really good job as well. But awesome. All right, let's see another photo. Let's keep it rolling. All right. So um, the next two are so this is a, a senior session I did recently. I think I shared this already in the group, um, and uh, I just I think I pulled the I pulled this one up because. Um, just talking about how we shoot uh, for skies and everything and, and as far as lighting goes. Um, uh, so Chad, you shared in the group a couple of weeks ago about the, uh, the using the CTB, CTO gels to change the color of your skies and everything. And, right. you know, and, that's, and that's an awesome trick. You know, I, I love using that too. Um, so I just want to share kind of like um, how, uh, how and why I would do that. Um, so this, this first image right here, this is just um regular flash there's no gel on it or anything like that um and then you can see this guys you know it, it's uh it's it's blue right um if i wanted to if i wanted to edit this see i can just use crush all right so it brings that blue out it's pretty you know it looks pretty awesome pretty good look right there um so i wanted to try out the uh, ctb trick that um you were talking i think you like posted about it that Day, so I was going to try it that night. <laughs> the senior shoot, um, right? Because I hadn't done it in a while. Normally, I'm using the CTO to change. So, if anybody hasn't tried it, you know, you would use a CTO on your in your light to, uh, it's it's going to warm up your subject's skin a little bit, so that way you can cool it down and bring those blues out some more in the sky. Um, but with the CTB gel, the the color temperature blue you would cool down your subject skin a little bit so you can warm up the sky a little bit more, uh, if that makes sense. Um, so uh, on this image, on the next image, I use a CTB gel. Uh, it's already warmed up, uh, so I did this all on camera. Um, so you can see at the, uh, the white balance here, the, it would, the white balance was already set at 7,700. Um, but if we move it down to the same as the previous image, so that one was at 6,000, um, then you'll see you'll kind of notice how her skin's a little bluish. 
Um, and that's because of that, that gel, um, that gel light that I use on her. So um, the reason, reason why I like doing that in camera, just because it's kind of neat to do it. And, you know, um, I, like, I like doing that kind of stuff in camera and then showing it to the clients, um, just because it kind of, it blows them away and it kind of adds to their experience and confidence in you. So, and they think you're some kind of like magician or something, or you got Photoshop <laughs> on the camera. And, um, you know, it's just cool stuff like that. You know, when you start using gels in your, in your work or in your shoots and you start showing them back of the camera stuff, um, they get really um, excited and it, and it just adds to their overall experience in the session. Um, you can just do this all in post if you wanted to, but uh, I like to have it all done already in camera. Um, so I'm just going to put this back to where it was. Uh, we'll use Crush on this one too. And so it's kind of a slightly different look than the other one. I think everybody voted on this one though in the group. They, they like this one a little bit better. Um, yeah. and I do too. Um, it's a little bit punchier um, in this one. I'd probably maybe fix her, uh, brush up her skin a little bit with like the quick dodge and lift to um, brighten it up a little bit. But uh, um, so that's just, yeah, just a shooting tip. That's why I wanted to conclude th uh, include this image in here just to kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah, my, um, I posted, uh, if anybody's curious about the, uh, the gel trick, I did post a video um, that Magmod and Jared Gant did in this group uh, a couple of weeks ago. So it's up on YouTube if you want to go look at uh, how, to, how to shoot using uh, gels to shift the color of the skies. Um, and we've posted some examples before, but it's a really, really neat trick. And my, actually, my favorite time of the day to do this is after sunset. So the photos that I posted right that day were done um, probably about 15 to 20 minutes after sunset during that blue hour. Oh, yeah. So when we put the, um, you know, when we put the orange gel on the flash, we cranked the sky extremely, extremely blue because it was already looking kind of blue. And then when we put the, the full blue uh, gel on there, basically my final white balance ended up being over 10,000 Kelvin. So the sky looked super, super warm and like surreal looking. But because there wasn't a lot of ambient light, I guess the, the way the colors, you know, transitioned uh, through the camera, it just gave it two completely, completely different looks. Yeah. And that's always been kind of my go-to ever since that, uh, that shot is to use the, um, use the CTB gel after sunset on our couples. You use the uh, full, full CTB? Yeah, I, I'll use the full ones <laughs> just because I want it to be, as, try that. yeah, I want to, I want it to be as dramatic as possible, especially, you know, after, uh, like I said, it's because the ambient light's so low when you shift it, um, when you shift it that much, it's just, it looks super surreal looking. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun little trick. And like you were saying, I try to do the same thing. I crank the white balance up and down as much as possible and then show them the back of the camera. And I'm like, look, we took this uh, 30 seconds yeah. apart and they're like, what the heck? You're a, you're a wizard. And yeah. really it's just a super easy trick of switching out the gels and changing your white balance. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so for this image, uh, I mean, I could probably try the uh, nature color on it. See how that looks. So see how it kind of affects the sky there, but it also kind of, it also does a lot to like the details in the wood around her. Yeah. Like um, let's see here. So how do you fine tune your, uh, your radials as far as, you know, making it to where there's no halo effect or anything like that. Do you use the, um, the masking tool at all, or do you just use the feathering tool or? Um, so, so for my radials, I just, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of just see where it's at. Um, and then hold on real quick. And then I just adjust left and hold uh, option over here and then just drag left and right to adjust. looks like I changed something here. So, right. So yeah, if you hold alt and click on that dot and move left to right, it adjusts the strength of the preset is, uh, is basically yeah. what it's doing. Yeah. So Have if you, you can, yeah, uh, the adjustments on the, on the right here, they're just, and that's what I really like about these, um, these presets, but how they just, they all just work together like that. Right. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't know if you ever used that, uh, that range mask tool or anything like that. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to be I, honest. I know what you're talking about when you're, <laughs> yeah, um, no, yes. I figured <laughs> I do use okay. that a lot. Um, uh, when I'm using the brush, I'll use it. Um, and if I'm brushing, you know, just right. over, um, her skin or something like that. Um, so maybe I'll just 
try it out real quick. Uh, so I'll use like the quick dodge and lift. And then, and then yeah, just over here, the range mask, color, and just use the eyedropper tool. Yeah. So what that's doing is it's selecting that color and it's only making that brush adjustment that he just did to that, to that color. So yeah. it's basically fine tuning it for him and uh, bump up the exposure just a little bit more on your, uh, on your brush, just so they can kind of see the, the difference that it's making okay. where it's not touching the, the blues or anything like that. All right. Let me turn off the, uh, <laughs> all that red. Oh, Looking like a oompa loompa right now. Yeah, no, I turned on the um, <laughs> the, um, the mask thing so we, it, it can show them where, where. But I don't know why it's not coming off. Oh, there it goes. All right, so I'm gonna bump it, bump that exposure up just a little bit more. Yeah. All right. So just for instructional purposes, that's not how bright yeah. I'm gonna make here. But so yeah, even so though kind of yeah. go over the whole thing and it's not gonna touch any of the other stuff around it. Um, Yeah, so basically it just allows you to be a little bit more flexible with your brushing to where you don't get that halo or, or accidentally spill over into other colors or whatnot. It's, it's yeah. a fun little trick. So I just wanted you to, to demonstrate. Sorry, I kind of threw that out there last oh, minute. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened to her face here. Let me see. Um, yeah, because normally I'm, uh, I'm, you know, you, you would zoom in and try to get it right, you know, with the yep. brush. It just takes too that just takes too long and we really have time for that um but yeah that that trick i love that trick um i just learned about that like recently too i think it was, um I was watching either you or one of pi's uh, uh videos um so you know you guys definitely like watch the uh the um visual flow youtube videos all the tutorials because there's a lot of there's a lot of like, um good stuff that that pi drops in there yeah um, we need to uh, we need to get a video up on the new hue adjustment that they have in there because that's new. And I'll be honest, yeah. I haven't even touched that yet because I'm not exactly sure how to use it. I'm guessing it's just yeah. the hue of the color that you're brushing, but yeah. I haven't played around with that myself yet. <laughs> I've been playing around with it a little bit. I yeah, I, I honestly don't know exactly what it does, but I think yeah, yeah pretty sure that's. I'm, I'm trying. To I'm glad they put it in there though, because that was one of the things that I've been wanting. I just don't know how to. Yep, there we go. Okay. There we go. We'll we'll learn on the fly. So we're literally just adjusting the hue of the uh, the brushed area. Exactly yeah. what we thought. <laughs> Green. <laughs> awesome. All right. I think that's perfect. You should deliver it to her like that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Raj. This video will be available to watch. It will be in the group, and uh, I am recording it. So we uh, may post it up on the uh, Visual Flow YouTube later. I'm not sure yet, but um, it is being recorded and it will be available in the group. Awesome, Ray. Um, that looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's see what else you got here. All right. Um, so I'm gonna go into uh, Sky Swaps. Perfect. Um, so we have uh, my senior here again. Um, this is uh, Lexi. So I already, um, I already did their, um, their uh, preview session, sales session. Um, and this is one of the images they want. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit because I'm supposed to retouch this a little bit for them before they buy this. <laughs> um, where they uh they get this order so they they actually bought this as a 15 by 30 um print um but mom really wanted me to uh, uh change the sky she, you know do the thing you do with the sky is what you know she, she said um so i'm gonna do that um for my demonstration here and just give you guys some uh just quick tips that i do um because i know a lot of people are I, I i use luminar for the sky swaps it makes it super easy and a lot of people are starting to use that now they're just uh um a few things that i've been noticing that um, i want to point out so that way um people uh you know can not do that um <laughs> sky swaps so uh all right so real quick i've already uh edited this image the way i, I wanted it to so i'm not really going to touch too much on it um i'm just going to go right into luminar cool did you um, use, um, did, which preset did you use for that? This one, uh, I want to say it was like, it was modern and then just kind of like did some other modern. adjustments okay. in there. Um, gotcha. But uh, didn't go too like heavy with it. This was just kind of one of those. Uh, uh, so like when I, when I show my clients the session, I, I just do like a quick like modern edit or um, on, on most of the images. And then right. I only do like heavy editing on a few of them. Um, so this is one of those like, um, 
images I didn't really touch too much on, but then they really wanted it as a big print. So now I got to, you know, work the magic on it. Um, all right, so I'm going to pull this into Luminar. And uh, yeah, and before Luminar, like I wasn't always using Luminar for sky swaps. Um, uh, I was using a Topaz Remask. I don't know if you ever used that before. Um, I haven't. I haven't heard of that one. I know, I know Topaz for like the sharpening and noise reduction uh, software that they have, but I didn't, uh, haven't never used Remask. Cool. Yeah, it, um, I still have it in there. So Remask, you know, you would just kind of trace over uh, where you would want to cut out, um, kind of like you would do in Photoshop, but it's more uh, like you don't have to, like you just really have to highlight over the edges and then it'll just calculate, you know, what it should cut out and you can find, and it, so it was a really good tool. And then you would just, you know, just uh, use that as a layer in Photoshop. And it took, it still took a long time to do it. So um, um, Luminar was definitely, definitely made things a lot easier um, as far as sky swapping goes, but it's not perfect. There are some things you gotta watch out for. Um, so in uh, Lightroom, you can pull up Luminar um, as a plugin right away. Um, I still do it out of Photoshop. So I'll still open this in Photoshop just because I like to, in case I got to make a couple more adjustments in there, um, like clone things out. Um, or make some adjustments afterward. Um, I'll do that. Um, you can do that in Luminar too, but uh, the only thing with Luminar, it's it's a huge memory hog. So you know, if your your computer's not you know um, fast enough, it might take a long time to do things. So I try not to do too much in Luminar, it's, you know, unless I'm doing just the uh, sky swap and stuff. So um, so I got in Photoshop and. I'll, I'll probably just, you know, duplicate that layer and then oh. and then I'm going to go ahead and open up Luminar from here. I'm excited. I still haven't downloaded Luminar. I need to need to play around with it myself. All right. Let me know if you do. I'll send you my link. <laughs> I was just using this live video so I can uh, copy your technique. <laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah, the, the, the sky, um, right here, it's, you know, it's, it's okay, but you know, we can make it, you know, we can make it more dramatic, especially for, you know, doing, um, if they want this as like a 15 by 30 print in their house. So, um, first I'll make a couple adjustments in, uh, the essentials. So the way it's set up, it's almost kind of like, um, like Lightroom, you know, like you have your, like these are pretty familiar already. Uh, you got your temperature, exposure and all that. Um, usually I'll just go right to like enhance. And what that does, it just, it kind of brightens things up, but um, doesn't, it's kind of hard to explain like how it does it. You know, it kind of just, like, I don't know if you can see what it's doing there. Um, right. I don't need to do it to this image, I don't think, but. Um, yeah, it's looks like it's adding in some of that micro contrast in the. Yeah. Uh, in between the um, shadow transitions yeah and if there was more shadow like in, in this image if it was uh darker that it would um it would bring a lot of parts out that, that it should and kind of leave um other things right. uh, darker um structure i really like to use uh that's basically it's it's like the clarity tool in lightroom yeah. but it's not it, it so there's a um the ai software in luminars it's it's pretty amazing um the ai structure it's gonna or it already detects where our subject is so it's just like using the clarity tool in Photoshop or in Lightroom, um, but it's not like, as you can see, like it's, it's making everything else <laughs> pop out, but it's leaving our subject alone. So it's not affecting her skin and, um, and, and everything. So that's, that's really pretty cool. wild. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we got a couple more sharpeners here, but I'll go right into the uh, sky swap. That's what everybody wants to know about. So, uh, so all you gotta do is just go, so you got the essentials and then you just go to the um, little artist palette here on the right, click on that. And this is where all the creative stuff is. So you got the uh, sky replacement and you just pick a sky. Um, and then it already comes built in with all these skies here, but you can also um, put your own sky in. Uh, so the skies they have here are really nice. Um, the only issue with the skies here is that um, everybody's they're they're starting to become more recognizable um you know especially like i'll know a luminar sky swap already right away like 
people post it like, all right, that's definitely a luminar sky right there. Right. Um, so, uh, they're still cool. You know, I would still use them like for clients and everything like that's a really cool sky, but I've seen it everywhere now. Um, you know, I, I've kind of been using this. I, I, so I, I got luminar like the day it came out. So, um, you know, I was kind of having fun with it for a, a little while, but you know, and then you start seeing like the same skies coming out and you're like, all right, I gotta, you know, start, um, taking pictures of my own skies or something. Um, and, and I'll do that too. If, um, you know, if there's a really cool sky out, but I'm not shooting that night, I'll grab my camera, go outside and, you know, take a picture of it. Um, but yeah, that now, are you, right. what's that? Now I was going to say now when you're taking photos of the skies for sky replacements, are you trying to take them from the same vantage point, same angle, same lens, all that stuff that you normally would um, um, yeah. for a portrait like this? Yeah. Um, if I have time, like, uh, you know, normally if, if I'm just sitting at home, the sky actually looks really cool right now. Actually, I might just go out there and take pictures later. But uh, <laughs> Well, go, uh, go take one and demonstrate how you bring it in. Go take, um, the, go take yeah. a photo of the sky right now and bring it back to us in five minutes. <laughs> um, 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 well, yeah, that was a good question. Though, Scott, what I would do is I would use different focal lengths, you know, just that, that way I could have um, the different focal lengths to match um, what I wanted. Um, and then uh, what I used to do is I used to also take them before Luminar. I would take uh, I would take them at different um, different focus points, I guess, like like uh, depths of field. So if I wanted to, if I was uh, shooting a scene that had you know some bokeh in the background, you know shallow depth of field, then my sky would have the same thing. Um, right. You don't really have to do that with Luminar. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys that real quick. So right now I I swapped the sky in with this uh, dramatic sunset, um, but. And, and I've seen this, a, I see this a lot um, where you, they swap the sky in, but then you can tell that there's some depth of field. You can see the pier in the background here. It's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's a little blurry, you know, it's got um, a little bokeh in it. I, I shot this with a 70 to 200, um, at like F, I'm pretty sure like at F point, um, F2.8, um, just because I wanted to get more compression in the background and get that pier to the pier a little bit more closer. Um, but yeah, it's gonna, it, it, it's, it blurred out the background there. So you can't have, you know, a sharp sky and a, uh, a blurry background. Um, and I, and I see that, um, done a lot. So whenever you're using a sky, you got to make sure it makes sense with the scene that you're using it for. Um, you know, can't just drop a, a random sky in there. Even if you might, even though you may really you know, like, like the sky a lot, you want to make sure it makes sense with everything else. And uh, one thing in Luminar that you can do is you can uh, adjust the sky focus. So right here, there's a slider for that. Um, and pretty much mostly everything in Luminar is just a slider. Uh, so you, I just I give it just a little bit of um, an adjustment. I don't have to go too, too crazy with it, but just enough to match what's going on back there. So that way it just makes a little bit more sense uh, right. with what's going on. Yeah, one thing I've noticed with um, with some some sky swaps before is the direction of light too. You have to pay attention to yeah. where that direction of light is coming from on your subjects and on other things in the background. You know, like you, you got to look look at your shadows and your highlights and see where they're falling and make sure that sky matches that too. Yep. Yeah. Stole my thunder there, Chad. Yeah, that's an, that was actually going to be my. Oh, next I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. No, I'm glad you brought that up though. Uh, that's like a huge, a huge thing I, I see a lot too is, uh, is, is the, the lighting patterns not matching up with right. what's going on in the scene. Um, and right here, you know, it, it, you can see that the light and the clouds are coming from the left, you know, same with the light that's on her, uh, on her and her face. I was using off camera lighting here, but this, it, during, um, in uh, Eastern North Carolina, the sun also does set that way as well. Um, so just, yeah, it would make more sense to have a sky that's, um, and I'm going to show you guys a different sky in the right um, real quick, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about here. Oh, it's already there. All right, so this is the, uh, another pack you can buy with Luminar. It's a California Sunset Pack. So I was using this one, too, because uh, it, they weren't being used as much. But now I'm starting to see these a lot, too. So i got to find a different pack or, again, just start taking pictures of my own skies. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so I'll use this guy as an example. All right, so yeah, this one already, you, know, um, you can tell a lot more that the uh, sun's off to the left, left here. Um, sometimes if you get a, a, if you put drop a sky in and then it's the other way, you can flip the sky in Luminar just right here. And that's just what nice. I, did, I did right now. You can flip it 
that way, you know, you get the sun where you want it to make more sense. So now it kind of makes a little bit more sense um, with, you know, how the light's falling on her face and where the, the light seems to be coming from in the, in the sky. Perfect. So actually, yeah, I think I'm going to use this guy for this, uh, for this image. Um, another thing that you have to look out for is, uh, and the reason why, you know, like Luminar, it's not perfect. I'm going to go back to another sky here. Um, it's using the AI to kind of try to sense of, you know, where the sky is in your image. So um, right now it's like, it's, it's guessing that the sky is going to look, you know, like this is the sky right here. It's this bright, you know, it's, it's sensing that, but sometimes it's going to pick it up in other parts of the image you don't want it to, you know, like it might, and it, and it does a lot to the subjects and I wish it, you know, it, it would do a better job of, um, you know, not overlaying the sky over them. Um, so you can see like how she kind of turned a little blue, like when I put that sky up, um, let me flip that, see if it's even better that way. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see like some clouds in her shirt there. So. Right. That happens a lot, and so you have to really look around uh, your your uh, your image just to make sure that didn't happen, you know, anywhere you know, anywhere else. But it happens like probably 80, 90 percent of the time um, with Luminar. So, like I said, it's not perfect. Um, but the way I would fix that, um, you know, they have a masking tool here. So, for every uh, every effect that they have here, they have um, this this mask. Um, you just click on that, use a brush, um, click on erase. And then you just brush it. You just brush it off of them. Um, right. But you, gotta, you know, of course, you got to be careful. You know, um, to not get it out the edge and you know get that that haloing effect. But now, you know, it's it's she's starting to pop back out and skin getting some of that sky out of her shirt there. So you got to really just be careful with it, but try to get all that out. I'm not gonna not gonna go too crazy with it, but let me zoom back out so. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, she doesn't have, I think there's still some more on her forehead here. So that's usually what takes the longest for me when I'm doing sky swaps and luminars is doing that. Um, you know, and sometimes it will get it perfect, but most of the time I have to uh, go over my subjects again. Um, and let me see the difference here. So you can shut it off. Turn it on. So yeah, that's, that's the difference right there. And you know, and I don't know if you notice that like, what I like about the the sky swaps in Luminar is that um, it also kind of adjusts the light in the scene to match um, the lighting, not the direction of light, but the color of light to kind of just match the uh, the, the color of the sky. Um, right, kind of a tone overall tone adjustment almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that yeah. before in Photoshop, when I would do my sky swaps in Photoshop, I'd have to do a bunch of other stuff just to get the right. colors to match up. Um, but I'll take it even a step even further uh, further on these um, to get the colors to come together. Um, you can also adjust the temperature here on your sky and the exposure. Um, but what I do is I always go down to uh, this part of the module where you got the color styles here. Um, so these LUT packs that come with the, uh, the software are pretty nice. Um, and they kind of just bring the colors in a little bit more, you know, overall in the image. So you got, um, you know, different options here. You got cinematic toning. Um, so it kind of just gives them like these, uh, gives a little bit more like color harmony to the images. Um, some of them are really strong effects, but you can, you can adjust the amount of the effect here too. So it's not too crazy. So just a little, just little things that I'll do also just to. Right. That's cool. Do it. So we have a, uh, I have a question from Mary in the audience. Um, she's wondering if Luminar has a way to flip the sky to see, um, to see a reduced sky in the water. So say for like a reflection or something like that, do they have, do they have that capability in there? That's a, yeah, that's a good question, Mary. Um, so they don't, um, I've seen, you know, sometimes like they'll, uh, um, like sometimes my, my, my uh, with the way when I adjust the lighting and in the scene, I'll notice that I'll do some stuff to the water, but it's not like if the water was perfectly still, if it wasn't the ocean, um, no, then it wouldn't give me like a reflection of the sky. Um, there's ways to do it in Luminar. Like you can just, so Luminar has layers also just like Photoshop. So you click up here and then you can add another layer um, to this where you would, you know, uh, 
like flip the sky. Of course, you have to do it all manual, like you would you know, do it in Photoshop and do the same thing. Um, and it's going to take a little bit longer. I've I've never had to do it really, um, uh, but I, I've seen it. I I think there was a tutorial on it. I saw it somewhere. Uh, but so you can do it. Um, it's just going to be a lot more work. Right. And I don't think it's going to, you know, you're going to have to do a lot of extra stuff too, if you wanted to um, match like the ripples in the water. And yeah, I'm not that, I'm not that great at Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. Doing uh doing reflections is, is difficult. I've done, you know, I've dabbled a little bit in some, some super advanced uh, post-processing. We did some, um, some jets one time, some corporate jets and you have, you know, all the little windows on the jet. Oh yeah. And, uh, we were playing around with uh, enhancing the sky and enhancing those to match. And it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So I think this, that's pretty much all I would do with this image. Um, see, I can, I could cool. probably do more it later, but so you just, awesome. it and it'll, it'll uh, apply it to the image in Photoshop or, um, and in, and in Lightroom. Um, cool deal. Uh, yeah. I like it. Um, I definitely think that sky matches matches the scene the best. Oh crap! I forgot to flip it. Um, yeah, I wasn't <laughs> gonna say I wasn't gonna say anything, but <laughs> yeah, I, I flipped it. Yeah, back to the way it was, but oh, well. it's okay. We'll um, forgive you. We we saw what it looked like. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll just mess around with it later. Maybe add some birds or something. Cool. Well, awesome, man. That was a um. That was great. Do you guys have any more questions uh, within Luminar or if with uh, with Ray's tips? Um, we're coming up on an hour, so we're going to go ahead and start kind of yeah. wrapping things up here in just a moment. Um, Ray, we'll let you do uh, – we'll walk through one more photo if you would like, um, yeah. and we'll have some questions come in hopefully for you. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and pick one of the last two that you had for, uh, for editing, I'll let you decide. I'm going to go ahead and go with this one. Uh, so I had this one too, but I think this one I, um, I want to go with because I want to talk about this also. Um, so awesome. shooting, uh, you also want to have, you know, these final shots, uh, final images in mind, um, too. So if you know, you're going to do a sky swap or you're going to add a sunset in there, you know, um, uh, do a little bit extra more in your shooting to, to make sure it all comes together at the end. So, um, in this one, uh, you can see, I had the, this girl's mom in the background with, uh, my, uh, with my V1 and, um, uh, one of the uh, CTO mag gels. Um, so we were creating our own sun. Uh, sunset in the back. Um, so the reason why I wanted to do that because I already knew I was going to sky, uh, sky swap and uh, add a sunset in the back. Um, I just wanted to have uh, that little touch of light on her, um, just to kind of make it make a little bit more sense, you know. So that, that way, it it looks more like there's sunlight coming from back there um, when I do add that sun. So uh, nice tip there. Uh, so well, I, oh, yeah. I was going to say, if you want to pull this one in and do it, go yeah, for it. Uh, I'll do it real quick. Um, it shouldn't take too long. Awesome. I'll just pull it straight into the Luminar. Um, I know that pier very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, me too. I, 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 think, I think I was at that pier like maybe five or six times this last month. Yeah. Like all that's in one view, it was crazy. Yep, that's good old hometown there. So this is the... Uh, just for the viewers information, this is Bogue Inlet Pier in Emerald Isle, North Carolina. All right, so I'm just gonna bring up that with the accent tool again real quick, maybe a little bit of structure. All right, um, I'll try to be careful to add too much structure in the beginning because then I'm gonna bring those clouds out some more and that might mess with the uh, sky swap. So um, we'll just get right to the sky swap. So um, I'm gonna go with this one. No, that's not the one. Uh, this one. Nope, that's not it. So there's one I know. <laughs> there's one. I think it's this one right here because there's one I, I know that already has like a sun in that exact spot. Um, right. Now I wish you could like, yeah, there it is right there. So that kind of like fell right in the spot to where uh, her mom is. Um, I wish you could like adjust it, you know, laterally, but you, I don't know for some reason you can't you can't do that with the uh, with the skies. Um, so. So I dropped that sky in, um, and you can already tell, like I was talking about earlier, that you know there's 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 going to be some issues already. You know when you you know you put it in, um, I mean it, it kind of already dropped the sky into like uh, you can see like the little gaps in the um, the pier that fell in there um, great, but then you can see on that 
um, that post on the left or that column um, that some of this guy dropped onto the wood there. Right. Um, I'm like pointing at the screen like you guys can see. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, for that, you know, again, use a mask tool to, to get that out. And then, uh, and I'm just gonna leave the mom in there for right now. Um, I'm not gonna waste too much time trying to, you know, I'll worry about her later. Right. Um, so there we go. And I kind of went too far, so maybe I'll touch that up. It's probably not gonna be perfect, but for now, I just so, wanna show you guys what I'm gonna do. Right. So the paint and erase is up there at the top. So you're clicking edit mask and then paint and erase. Yeah. Yeah so, uh, yeah. so yeah, they got, you, you can switch between paint and erase um, for this masking. And then you can click on this eye right here to see, um, you know, show the mask. You, okay, cool. And, uh, I wish I can change the colors on this. Cause every time I do this, it's so <laughs> red, right. That like, after I'm done doing it, then like my eyes need to adjust for like a couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh and then, then you can see on the edges here that there's some parts that it didn't fill in, you know, some sky. So you have to play around with these sliders here. I, and, and honestly, I don't know what all these sliders mean. I just know that if you mess with them, it might get your sky to where you need it to be. So, you know, this global one, um, you can close the gaps. And usually it's like one of these that, that'll do it. And it's definitely yeah. not that one. Um, we can try it. this local one. Looks like that one was it. Um, it kind of messed with the pier a little bit more too, but that's yeah. okay. Um, well, I'm in. I'm impressed with what it uh, what it can do right off the bat to be able to fill in those little gaps there, because yeah. that would take so much time into Photoshop originally to mask out all those gaps. And oh yeah, and the I used to have a, a tough time, especially with uh, trees. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but this one uh, this one can do trees also. Um, one more thing I was going to show you guys. Um, we got some other tools here, so I can make that sun come out some more just at, by adding some sun rays. And so click on the sun rays option here, um, place sun center. So that way you can uh, move the sun around where you need it to be. So if I wanted it to be right here and then you can add in some of that sun. Nice. So, so you can kind of see the rays already. Um, I'm just gonna make it a little strong just to show you. What's cool is that these rays will interact with the background. So if I wanted to move it behind that pier, you can kind of see. Oh, that's cool. So that is, yeah, it's really cool. So I'm just gonna put it over where that flash was just to, cause that's where my son was. And then, you know, just mess around with it so it doesn't look too crazy, but you know, it looks just about right. So just, you know, just messing around with the, 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 um, the length of the rays and the, how much the sun is glowing. So it's just slider adjustments um, for all these is super easy. Um, but you want to do, you want to take, you know, the time to make sure that you do get everything right. So that way, uh, that way it doesn't look off. Um, and then there's also some uh, spots in the water here where they put some clouds and you can probably mask those out later too. But like, yeah, in, in, a, in a nutshell, that's basically what I would do um, for an image like this. Um, if I had more time, obviously I'd, you know, tweak it more until it, it, it looks perfect. Um, but, uh, and, and bring it to Photoshop, maybe get rid of that, the feet and mom in the background there. But right. other than that, yeah, that, Poor mom. those are, <laughs> those are my main uh, tips for, uh, for swapping skies. Um, just to recap, um, you know, using lighting, uh, just to, to, um, you know, shooting with the, the, the vision already. And then, uh, if you, if you want to, if you want to, Put a sun back there you know use some lighting to create more um uh like realistic sun or sunlight effects on your subjects um or shadows too um uh, also the focus you know you want to make sure if you're shooting at a shallow depth of field that you, you know you adjust the focus of your your sky um this was my shot uh pretty high depth of field so i don't really need to do that with this image and um and then thirdly uh just looking around the background, looking around the, the scene and making sure you're, uh, you're masking out those parts um, of the, you know, that where, where Luminar dropped the sky um, over, you know, like the, like the post over here. Um, that's going to happen a lot. So you want to make sure you, um, you pay attention to that too. Right. Ray, were you using a front light on this image too? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, I had, 
Yeah, I think I just had an 8200 with a sphere on the right. Um, and then mom only had just a speed light with the gel on it. Um, I would have I would have used a sphere, but I only own one sphere, so I need to get more spheres. Right. Awesome. Well, cool deal. So we got some questions rolling in. Um, we'll get you to, uh, well, we can leave the, sh the screen sharing up for now, but um, uh, Raj asked about uh, shooting for these photos. Um, he asked if you were intentionally uh, shooting underexposed for these presets and, you know, how do you know what settings through uh, to use basically. Um, so we, we kind of briefly mentioned that earlier, you know, shooting a little bit for the left, underexposing a little bit more. Um, and, uh, but yeah, how do you typically shoot for, for this? Yeah, you definitely, um, I definitely underexpose. Uh, you know, I've been, like I said earlier, I've been using my histogram a lot more. Um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Raj, what, um, what you're shooting with, uh, with the Sony's, you're able to kind of see the exposure already before, um, am I still screen sharing? No, I took you off. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so yeah, if, if um, you, you know, you're using a Sony, you can see the exposure already, you know, before uh, you, you take the picture. So you can already kind of just gauge where you want, um, like how dark you want it, how bright. But um, I've been using the histogram a lot more too, just to kind of make sure everything's, you know, pulled to where I need it to be. Um, not going too overboard. I don't want to uh, go to to uh, lose any details in the shadows um, too much. I want to still be able to bring those out. Uh, too. Right. So yeah, these, um, the crush and modern presets, they are going to add a little bit of a uh, pop to the highlights and the whites. So I typically underexpose about half a stop with, uh, with the majority of my photos and it's a pretty good balance for a one click, um, exposure, yeah. at least on the Sony's that's how, you know, that's how it's been for, uh, for me and my experience. But, um, Tanya asked, uh, or Tanya said she doesn't sky swap, but seeing your work makes her want to try it. Um, she asked if Luminar is worth purchasing if you don't plan on using it often, or if you had uh, an editing company that uses Luminar uh, to be able to do, you know, a photo or two. Yes. Um, so yeah, Luminar is definitely, uh, you know, I mean, if you don't, well, if you don't use it too often, it's fun to play with, you know, there's some other stuff that Luminar does uh, that, you know, besides just the sky swapping, um, like if you do like close up portraits, even um, I was talking to a buddy today, he's using it for his boudoir stuff. Um, and because the, the uh, portrait mode, and I didn't get to show you guys that, um, you know, because we're talking about skies, but the portrait mode, it, it has this skin clarity, all that stuff in it. You know, it's just, again, it's just a slider. And it actually works really well. You know, like I would even compare it to, you know, like Portraiture uh, or Portrait Pro, whatever you guys use. Um, you can do a lot with the, um, you know, uh, with the, the eyes, lips, everything. It's got like a complete like portrait um, software, uh, software in it in one of the other modules. Um, so even for that, it works really well. Um, I haven't played around with like too many of the other like settings, or but there's a, there's a ton of features in it that um, that are really cool. Uh, so yeah, I, th I definitely think for I think I think it's like like ninety or a hundred bucks, um, almost at the same 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 as one of our packs. It's definitely worth it. Um, for editing companies, uh, I do uh, outsource um, some of my editing um, just because you know I don't have the time to be doing Luminar all the time. So um, I use Evolve Edits uh, and those guys like just, they do things that like I can't even, like I'll never be able to do. So uh, I definitely use them um, and uh, and yeah. But if, I, if I'm trying to save money on Evolve Edits cause they're, they're, they're sky big edits are like, I think it's like 120, 150 per image. So if I'm trying to save money. I'll just do a, a quick Luminar. Uh, sky swap and that usually that usually works but I'll, I'll do at least like one big evolve edit for uh, per job right well there you go there's your answer an edit is more expensive than the software so <laughs> i am definitely probably going to get the software and try it myself um and elizabeth asked if uh if you're using it as a lightroom plugin so you know how you were able to go in and uh, click edit in uh, did you install it as a lightroom plugin yeah, um, and I think for that last image, that's how I, I how I uh, used it, or how I did it. I just pulled it right out of Lightroom. Um, you know, just right click, uh, edit in in uh, Luminar, and and then you can go right back into Lightroom, and it'll have the virtual copy um, in there for you. Um, and you can use it yeah as a as a Lightroom um, plugin or um, a Photoshop plugin. Uh, most of the time, I'm using I'm pulling the image out of Lightroom into Photoshop first, and then. Uh, applying Luminar to like a, a, a duplicated layer. 
Um, that way, after after Luminar, after I do my Luminar stuff, I can go and do some more Photoshop stuff, and then bring it back into Lightroom at the end. Awesome. So Mary said, uh, thank you. And as always, she appreciates you sharing your knowledge. Uh, Susan asks, can you add your own sky photos to use as a swap option? So yes, yeah. you can. We, we talked about that a little bit in the video and, and Ray showed you where you can kind of install those and drop them down. Um, and Elizabeth mentioned that you can underexpose two to three stops with, uh, with the Sony and Nikons and still get beautiful results. And you can also overexpose two to three stops, at least with the Sony, and get beautiful results. So uh, I was talking with uh, Rob Hall today, um, and uh, somehow or another, uh, for like one photo during an important moment, his ISO accidentally got bumped to uh, to auto, and um, he was using flash, so it overexposed like three stops, and it was like that was that was the one photo that he wanted and he was able to pull it down three stops in post and all the highlights and everything were perfectly reserved um with this wow. set so it's uh the dynamic range in cameras today is crazy so you got some flexibility in uh in your exposure especially with these presets on and getting the uh the overall exposure correct in the end and the nice thing about at least for the visual flow that I've found, I hardly ever even touch the highlight shadows, whites and blacks anymore. I'm literally just touching the exposure and the mm -hmm. white balance and then playing around with the brushes. That's all I do. Yeah. That's I, yeah, yeah. Same here. Um, yeah. Just like, I, I think I showed you guys earlier, it's like one click and then you just adjust that exposure until you get, you know, the skin or the scene where you need to be. Um, sometimes like if I overexpose too much, I'll, bring the shadows up but that's really yeah that's really it yeah yeah I th honestly i think the only thing i ever have touched <laughs> other than selecting the right high um you know lighting based preset or whatnot um is the shadows just like you said bringing it out just a little bit more detail here and there but overall it's it's made editing for me a lot faster at least but um i'm ex i'm excited to try the uh the sky swap and i think i'm going to i haven't done any sky swaps probably like four or five years now <laughs> so I think I'm going to have to get a, to get Luminar myself. Um, let's see. We've got a few more thank yous. And um, Mary said that she was horrible with masking and bought Luminar. I was very, very pleased with her first go at it. Uh, Jose says really good tips. Thank you. Tanya says, thank you. You're awesome. And Joanna said, Hey Ray, such great info again. Hey Joanna, we got a lot of, uh, Jackson, uh, like our local people in here. We got some NC people in here represent. <laughs> well, cool deal. So if any, um, we'll give you just uh, another minute or so to drop some questions in for Ray before we sign off. But Ray, thank you uh, again for joining me to, to chat about this. Um, I definitely learned a couple of things, especially with Luminar. So I may, I'm excited. Um, but just to recap, you know, kind of three tips uh, as far as shooting for how to expose your images we went over. Um, how to how to edit and tweak for the skies we talked about gels shifting shifting uh white balance and um using that sky and clouds brush out of the retouching pack is uh is one of our favorites um do you think you're uh do you think you use modern more or crush more now that it's out or do you kind of use both about 50 50 um wow i've been That's using a lot yeah lately yeah <laughs> you know, like i'll start you know with like modern um uh sometimes i've you know just i've used modern just like uh, as an import preset um, yep. sometimes it works out really well i shot a prom last week um i don't really do a lot of volume stuff but you know i, I did that and i and i was using um uh, i was tethering i've never like that was like the first time i've ever like tethered so yeah. <laughs> um but it was it was cool because I was using modern as uh, as my import preset, um, so as it was coming onto the screen, like the image looked like fantastic already, and it was just one you know scene for it, and I didn't even even after the prom and and I, and I and ordered everybody's prints for them, um, didn't have to re, you know do any additional editing or anything like that. I just left it as 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 modern. Right. Um, That's awesome. Modern. I haven't um. I haven't done much tether shooting and it's funny cause I do a fair amount of studio stuff and that's kind of, you know, what you do, but I just, I've never, uh, something about the cabling and hooking to my camera and moving around. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was my first time doing it. It was, uh, it was, it's kind of cool, but, um, yeah. I don't know. Awesome. So, well, once again, thank you, buddy. Um, 
Marissa Joy Daly says she just caught the tail end. She's going to go back and rewatch. Please do. And Raj says he's regretting not getting modern. I'm regretting it for you, buddy. I'm regretting it for you. Um, I love Crush. Yeah, both are both are awesome and both have their place. Um, I'll definitely I bounce back and forth. Like you said, I use modern as an import preset, and it works basically 99% of the time. But I like to use Crush on those detail oriented images, those porches that you just want to make pop right away. Yeah. And uh, it just requires for me less brushing and less pop of the colors. Cause I've always been a high contrast, high saturation person in my editing mm -hmm. and modern is pretty daggone close to a, a good clean base preset for me, but I always want just a little bit more of color and contrast in, in those portraits. So um, that's kind of how I've always, or ever since crush has come out, that's how I've been editing is all my portraits are basically crush and like prep of the wedding day and uh, ceremony is all modern. And then the reception, I kind of bounce back and forth, but cool deal. Thanks for joining me, bud. Um, really great talk. And uh, thanks for having and, me. Yeah.